So this is uncensored in your slides, and I'm showing it slightly photoshopped. Why? Because every time I show this picture, I, everyone needs a moment. Heck, when I saw this first pic, first saw this picture, I kind of need a moment because it's pretty gnarly. So yeah, they took someone who donated their body and they made a slice this way. So that's how they got this. You're looking at someone's face from the other direction. <laughs> I know, so it's like, this is why I'm kind of like, I don't know if it's too much for Twitch, I don't know what their policy is on things that are graphic, but I'm just being very cautious here. But if you want to see the full thing, this is on your slides. But th this is why I like this picture, like not in terms of aesthetics, but it shows you a lot of the internal structures of your nasal cavity. This is why I think it's a really useful slice, even though it's very graphic. And what you can see is that this part right here, where your nasal cavity is, it has this elaborate bony structure with all these tissues. So what you have is the ethmoid and the vomer. This forms what you call your nasal septum. So this divides your navel, nasal cavity into left and right. Now what we have here is a superior nasal concha that dang or extends from the ethmoid. So the superior nasal concha is a part of your ethmoid bone. And conch, I like to think of it like conch cell. Like conch cell is, has that spiral shape, right? So it kind of spirals, it's very elaborate like that. And the middle nasal concha, hey, it's no that it kind of extends off the ethmoid. It's kind of hard to trace in the original picture, so I'm trying my best to trace it in this picture. And hey, what's the opposite of superior? The opposite of superior is, again, so here's the ethmoid, so again, nose is very lacy, but yeah, there's also an inferior nasal concha. Now, the thing about this, the superior and middle nasal concha, they are part of the ethmoid bone. But this inferior nasal concha is a pair of bones that are considered pretty much their own structure. They're not really considered extensions of another, at least in most textbooks I've read. They're not really considered extensions of any of the other bones in your skull. They're kind of their own thing. So again, there are three pairs of nasal conchae. The superior and middle are part of your ethmoid, but the inferior is actually an extension off of another is its own extension. And if you remember your bone markings and landmarks, well, a metis. A metis is like, again, the mnemonic I like is metis in the hallway. So a metis is a passageway between one area and another. So between each of these conchae, you have these this space, right, this air. And this is how your air travels between from your respiratory system to your environment and vice versa. So then you have a superior metis, you have a middle metis, and you have an inferior metis. So these are, not only do you have these little scroll-like conche, you also have passageways that go around these conche. Now, okay, this is a little easier, so I can show this, but this is why I like this section because it shows these structures very elegantly. So again, not showing the rest of the face, but what, so this is like a simpler picture I like to draw. I learned from a, one of my colleagues that it's like a, easier to see at which bones are part of what. So the ethmoid bone, you draw a triangle, that this is your base of your nasal cavity and cross section in a frontal plane. So the ethmoid, I would draw it as like this. So you have the upper part of your septum and also the roof of this nasal cavity. Those are part of your ethmoid. And then you have your vomer. This forms the bottom, the inferior part of your nasal septum. So this is your nasal septum, this line going straight up and down. Now over here is your hard palate, and which bone is it? Well, it depends how far front or back you are. So it can be part of your maxilla if it's up more forward, but it can also be part of your palatine if it's further back. But just know this is the bony part of your palate of your mouth, or the roof of your mouth, right? And then you have your superior nasal concha, so this is actually part of your ethmoid. This is why I like this figure. So you draw extensions like this. And then the middle nasal concha, it does extend, so it's kind of a little more curly cue this way. But the inferior nasal concha, they are extensions over here. So again, they are kind of considered their own bone. So yeah, these are your nasal concha. And what do they do? Well, the thing is that when you breathe in air, what they're, they're going to do is like by having all these elaborate structures, it's like trying to run through a hallway versus running through a garden or a hedge maze. Or if you have a very cluttered room or house, running through all the boxes and whatnot. Yeah, so what happens is that it slows down your progress if you have more obstacles in your way, right? Same with breathing in past these nasal conchae through your these metises, the superior, middle, and inferior metis. 
by mo breathing in past these conche, this swirls the air. So what it does is does things like warms up the air. It also traps any air or any dirt product particles that are breathed in. And also humidifies too because again the inside of your body lots of water so it's going to if you have you're in a very arid environment without a lot of humidity it's going to make that air more breathable and this yeah this irritating to your respiratory tract by warming filtering and also humidifying the air you breathe in so this is your upper airway again sometimes it uses the includes the larynx sometimes it doesn't uh, all of these structures right here. So it includes your nasal cavity, your oral cavity, and then it ends up in a common pathway. Now, I'll, I'm pretty sure like everyone here has had it, had ice cream at one point. And what does she have? Why is she holding her head? Is she having like a terrible day? Nah, maybe she's like me and he ate her ice cream too fast. So uh, you probably had like what you call sometimes a brain freeze, right? But is your brain actually freezing? Well, what causes a brain freeze? What is that painful sensation that's making her hold her head? Well, the thing is that if you go here, remember that your nasal conchae are supposed to swirl and warm the air, right? Now, over here we have our trigeminal nerve, and this is back in the nervous system. But what we have here is our oral cavity, and this is where we're tasting our ice cream, right? But the thing is that if you have, we're tasting our ice cream and we eat too fast, it starts to make this part very cold. And the thing is that you have all of these thermal receptor neurons that detect cold. And if it gets too cold, it starts to send pain signals along this trigeminal nerve. So again, this is why trigeminal nerve is also very important for you who are going to dentistry. Because again, the trigeminal nerve carries a lot of pain sensations. So what we're having here, the cold sensation is causing pain along this trigeminal nerve. Now, how can you rem remedy that? Well, considering where you're eating and where, what's being cooled down and being made too cold. So again, you're eating ice cream and it's also going to cause this part right here in your nasal cavity to be very cold. So that's going to send sensation, cold sensations along your trigeminal nerve up, but that's, well, you can't see in this picture, but it's going to send cold sensations all around, around this area of your heart palate and your skull. Now, or if you've ever been to in a cold environment and has it, if you've ever been to anywhere that got below zero, sometimes when it's so cold, it kind of hurts to breathe in if you, it's really cold outside, right? So what can you do to kind of relieve uh, your brain freeze? Is that you can take your tongue, very warm, and it has all that muscle, it helps with blood supply, and you can just press it to the roof of your mouth. By doing that, you warm up the hard palate right here. Hopefully you warm up your nasal cavity along with breathing in that and circling it around. And that should hopefully relieve your brain freeze. So I, I use this technique. It might work for some people, but this is the technique I was used, taught to how to remedy a brain freeze. At least it works for me. You can try it at home. Good excuse to buy ice cream. All right. So then let's talk about, so we have the nasal cavity. We'll talk more about the oral cavity when we get to the digestive system. But now let's talk about the pharynx. And there are three main regions to the pharynx. So we have our nasal pharynx, our oral pharynx, and our laryngeal pharynx. And collectively, these make up the three regions of the pharynx going from superior to in inferior. All right, so then what exactly are the borders? I think this is why the OpenStax version, or actually it should say OpenStax here, but this is why it kind of has a gradient because what are the exact borders? Don't worry about the borders between that, but why are they named that, those regions? Well, thing is nasal sounds like nasal, right? So nasal refers to your nose. So nasal pharynx is the no connection between the nasal cavity and the pharynx. And then oral pharynx, so oral sounds like oral, right? So oral refers to mouth. So oral plus pharynx is oral pharynx. And then what do we have down here? We have our larynx. So it's not inside the larynx yet, but the part that connects the oral cavity to the larynx, this is your laryngeal pharynx. So again, where is your nose? Where is your mouth? Where is your larynx? So you already know where, you, which is most superior, which is most inferior. The three regions correspond to your nose, your mouth, and your larynx.